Hi guys, Fabio Palvelli here with the D2 Conference. At D2, we believe in bringing you the right content for you to keep learning and keep growing in the field of archivists so that you, as an artist, can unlock your true creative potential. This is why we have designed the Inspiration Series, a small collection of talks done to help you connect the creativity dots in and out of our professional field. If this is your first time here on our channel, hit that subscribe button, and if you like our videos, feel free to share them with your friends and colleagues. It will mean the world to us. This time, I'm interviewing Joris Putteniers, a young architecture student from Belgium that has been achieving so much already in his career before even graduating. A little disclaimer, this episode might be best enjoyed by students or young professionals that are trying to adjust their mindset and that are looking for guidance in starting their own career. Joris is very skilled and talented and I know he will go on and do great things as a designer. I really hope you're gonna enjoy this talk. Three, two, one, and we started with the recording. Joris, <laughs> thanks a lot for being here, man. Thanks, man, uh, much appreciated. No, I really appreciate you taking the time and uh, I've already explained you why we're doing this, but I'm going to explain it also to the uh, people watching from home. So basically I'm here with Joris Putteniers. Did I say that yeah. right? Well, close enough. Yeah. Close enough. Yeah. I'm going to make a very small introduction about yourself. Correct me if I'm wrong, if I did a good enough of a research. You are 24 years old an architecture student with an interest in the algorithm and data-driven approach to architectural systems. You are a researcher with a passion for focused experimentation in the field of computational design and visual communication. You're currently finishing your Master of Architecture at St. Lucas, which is a school of art in Ghent, Belgium. i never been, but I hope one day. You are uh, you are already running your creative studio since 2017 uh, and you specialize in data-driven design, VR, AR technologies, digital fun fabrication, concept design, art direction, visualization. You have been wi widely published as an artist and your work has been exhibited in many places. One of them is New York, where you met a very dear friend of mine, Mike yeah. Pryor. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so was that enough of a, an introduction? Yeah, that was perfect, man. Uh, I'm, I'm quite honored if I uh, heard you talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, uh, I have to say, I'm very excited about this because one of the problems that I personally find um, today in today's education is the lack of like self-esteem, especially with the younger students. Mm. Uh, a lot of negativity because everybody thinks that there is no career outside of university. And maybe we can address some of these things together in this interview. But anyway, uh, before anything, why do you think I'm interviewing you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's kind of a hard question, man. Uh, I, I think because it, it's the kind of multi of transdisciplinary approach I, I take to uh, projects. I guess I, I'm not really a traditional architect in a sense. I try to shift between those uh, disciplines. And I think that is what makes it interesting. It's not always, not as well in, in these projects, but as well like in the workflows and stuff. So at the moment, for example, my uh, workflow is mostly Houdini and Gravity Sketch. So there's like totally, uh, in, in, uh, yeah, if you see the spectrum of 3D software, it's like total opposite. So perhaps that's also something. Uh, it is a very weird mixture, like yeah, going uh, from. But it's amazing, man. It's I, The combination is it's perfect. It's so beautiful. It's You, you know Gravity Sketch, right? The, uh, yeah, of course. I actually yeah. just bought a Oculus Rift. Oh, the best o decision. Man. Only because I want to do Gravity Sketch and uh, yeah. maybe Quill a little bit. Yeah, man, those are amazing, uh, amazing tools. I'm um, showing yeah. some of your work. Uh, you know, I have your uh, Facebook page open and I'm scrolling through. If I don't mistake, you are an F-Storm user. You render in yeah. F-Storm. 
I mean, I use multiple engines, but mostly App Storm at the moment, or uh, some and EV uh, real-time engine is also so, great. So it means that uh, you render in 3ds Max? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay, so it's a variety it, of tools and variety of skills yeah, coming together. Yeah. It's our, everything, man. That, that's the beauty of, of this. Uh, if you know a lot of 3D software, man, you can just pick all the best parts of each software and just like combine them in one in one workflow. So. <laughs> I think Storm is a great engine, so I, I love to use it in Julius Mexico. Let me ask you, how does somebody put, you know, themselves in the same position as you? I mean, how did you develop your interest for digital design? And how did you learn all the skills? I think it uh, was a bit, uh, it started from a frustration, I guess. Um, I mean, I, I'm in architecture school for like six years now. Um, and I remember one of my first projects was to create a architectural design using only SketchUp. And I, I quickly, I was like, it's so limiting, man. And SketchUp and AutoCAD are so limiting in, in tools. And I, I guess then my search was to um, find this workflow that really could work as an extension of your creative uh, mindset, I guess. And I learned like all the programs, Blender, 3ds Max, Maya, but it, it was very hard for me to find like the perfect, uh, yeah program for oh yeah. um, and and then I stumbled up uh, across Houdini and uh, I was I mean it, I was super scared I mean it was a, a very difficult program in the beginning but uh, at the end I mean uh, it it works wonders it's it's amazing so yeah I guess and then I mean yeah but you the, have the, done it all you, by yourself right yeah yeah my school is I would say pretty old school so like rendering or something is really not that supported. Um, I, it's like a traditional architecture school where drawing is the most important tool. And if you come with class with renders or something made in Blender or something, it's like, no, no, stop it, you know? And uh, so, yeah, it, it was also kind of a motivation, you know, to, uh, to work harder to like, because I, I kept uh, working in 3D and stuff and I always said like, no, stop it. But I just like, yeah, I kept doing stuff and uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, um, I was very lucky about five, six or seven, Jesus, time passes. About <laughs> seven, eight years ago, I was lucky enough to attend university with Chris Precht. Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, Panda? No. Panda. Yeah. yeah. Which is, uh, you know, now a very good friend of mine. And when we graduated from university, I remember clearly at that time I was writing a, a blog about architecture and it was a very famous and successful blog called 3D Dreaming. Mm -hmm, yeah. And I remember saying to myself, of all the students that I've been following through the career, because my main interest was about uh, students, so I was following a lot of like emerging students, Chris yeah. Precht was the really single, real single architecture student that was becoming an architect. Yeah. And now when I look back about the way I felt about him and I look at you and the work that you do, I feel the same way about you. So I'm like, this guy is going to go far. Oh, now. <laughs> Don't get over your head, yeah. <laughs> but you know, keep humble, keep working really hard. But I think that you're extremely talented designer and the stuff that you do is absolutely not ordinary. <laughs> and I really hope that people watching this will, you know, take a leap of faith in what I'm saying and come and visit you and check out your work. Because, you know, I think it's also a question of like attitude. In the yeah. last year, I've seen you to a couple of conferences we just yeah. stumbled uh, on each other. And, you know, I don't know personally a lot of students that are that motivated, you know, to a few. Yeah. But, you know, being yeah. a teacher and having had more than a thousand students, when you only have like two or three, you mm, know. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. But you know, the reason why I uh, mostly went to this conference is actually just to have conversations with people of similar with similar interests because, um, I mean, where I met rendering and stuff is not really that popular and like most of my friends don't really know what it is or something. So it was just like 
to have con uh, conversations with uh, people with similar mindsets. So, I mean, yeah, but, uh, I think the, the, the greatest thing about this conference is to just like meet people and uh, it's great. Yeah. I tell you, you're doing great because um, of all the people that I've known, students, those who were actually so, you know, taking everything so serious and went to conferences and, you know, studied the stuff because they understood that it wasn't about getting the grade, it was about the result, what they were making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All, all of those guys, they're now doing very good things. So, you know, it's a... Uh, that's that's one way to have a, a successful career, so to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about the motivation, I guess. Yeah, the, the discipline, the motiv and yeah, passion, I guess. Just passion. Very, be really passionate about what you're doing and professional. So, I'm very uh, happy to hear. Listen, let me ask you. To you know, you're very young and you've been published. Um, it's so many things that you know you have done already so young. Let me ask you, what do you consider being your biggest achievement? Um, I, I'm guessing the thing I'm doing right now, I guess. Um, at the moment, I'm teaching at the um, Texas A&M uh, uh, College in um, Architecture. And I am, uh, me and the students are will be creating these algorithms uh, that can uh, some input parameters. And we will working with Houdini, with Gravity Sketch. So I think, I mean, just be able to uh, to teach those guys is a, a, an amazing opportunity, I think. Um, yeah, I, it, it's so wonderful and the guys are great. Um, I and, think that's uh, cool. It's a, it's a very forward and, uh, you know, experimental school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you guys know the, you know the work of uh, T4T Lab, right? The, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's amazing what they're doing. It's, they, they really, um, I mean, exploiting these technologies to cre in, in an architectural context. And that just makes this, this so amazing school, I think. Uh, there was a, uh, a, a very f uh, good designers that we worked with in the past, which I think he recently has made the shift and he doesn't work in architecture anymore, but he came from the, uh, the same university. Chris hmm. Thackeray, have you ever heard of him? Ah, yeah, yeah. You uh, also works in the Dean, I guess. No? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure because we haven't been in touch uh, lately anymore, but I know that he went to work on like visual effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah, I'm not yeah. really sure, but he came from that university. Yeah, yeah. I was also a student of T4T Lab a couple of years ago, I think. Uh, yeah, it's a emerging trend, I guess, to like architecture students shifting over to the VFX or the film industry. Um, yeah, it's much more common than, than it used to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I hope that you stay in the architecture industry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dan? I, 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 I hope that yeah. you remain in the architectural industry. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it, I try to work on multiple disciplines, you know, uh, but architecture is definitely one uh, of my biggest ones. So, uh, yeah, definitely. I want to ask you a couple of things about, you know, the topic of inspiration. Um, I think personally, and I talk as a instructor and as a teacher, young people, especially, you know, like designers, when they're young, they need sort of like mentoring and inspirational mm -hmm. figures to guide them, so to say, into making the right decisions, right? Uh, yeah. In your case, did you have any person in your life that provided you with that guidance or did you look up to somebody that kind of pushed you in that direction? Um, I mean, of course, my family has always been very supportive, uh, but all my family members are uh, in a totally different uh, discipline. So it's not that they really knew what, what I was doing or something. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing not, uh, I had a few very good teachers that were really um, oh yeah, mentoring me, uh, but not in, in 3D or something. It was just like more for motivation and oh yeah. um, I think what, for example, most architecture students now um, take for inspiration are architects. And I think that is perhaps not really the, the best. Uh, I think it is very important that you have your inspiration sources for like other disciplines like biology or something or th some technology uh, discipline or I mean uh, if you always uh, see architecture inspirations you're all you're gonna copy them sometimes and it's like 
Yeah, you know what I mean? It's Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I totally agree. I think that, you know, one of the biggest issues is that especially designers, which should be those who are able to look at problem solving in a much more creative way than other people, they are actually those who fall victims of their own knowledge. So, you know, what they do is that they keep looking at architecture as yeah. the way to fix issues, yeah, design issues, when actually answers are all around us, yeah, you know? Everywhere. And it's, uh, you know, I'm, at the moment, I'm really in intrigued by this um, biology and entomology and stuff. It, it's so amazing, man. And just how, yeah, it, it's amazing. How, how you, can, like, you can get inspiration from everywhere. It's, it's beautiful. It's, it's a good thing that though you, you manage to look at that stuff and translate it and bring it into your own life. Because there are some people that actually, when they do start to look around, they get confused and they don't know yeah. how to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, how to perceive those. Yeah, yeah perhaps. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. Let, me, let me ask you, since you know, you're a student and it would be nice to have also the impression of somebody that comes from a little bit the teaching uh, as well. What do you think is the current status of like the teaching um, industry mm. and the you know universities? Yeah. Because a lot of students seem to me that they complain about the lack of resources and the lack of professors with an ability to teach mm. hyper current design mm -hmm. systems. Yeah. What is your take on this? Oh, uh, yeah. As, as I said, I come from a pretty traditional school and it is not encouraged by any means to work with the current technology or, or anything like that. Uh, so I, I definitely think um, we need to step up our game in terms of, I mean, there's so much great technology going on and there are a lot of schools that are uh, working with this technology like the Bartlett or SciArc or uh, A&M. And, and that's amazing what they are doing, but it, it needs to be more widely distributed, I guess. Like uh, I, 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 at our school, it was like since about five years that we had our first 3D printer or something. It, it's like, it's small steps, right? And I do understand that it, it takes a lot of um, like uh, financial support and, and stuff, but yeah, I, I think we really need to focus on that. Just like try to implement all these technologies uh, into the schooling system. And as architects as well, we need to be somehow at the, fore of the forefront, I guess, of technology and how we can implement those inside of an architectural context. And it's need to happen in the, in the schooling system. Definitely. Um, what about, uh, what do you think, why sometimes there is a feeling that, you know, teachers are kind of like, fighting progress rather than, you know, embrace it. Why do you think is that? Uh, oh, um, I think that it's the, um, some of the teacher I have, they've been teaching architecture for the past 30 years in their ways, you know? Um, and I, it, I do think, I, I mean, it's hard to change, man. I think, um, yeah, um, they're a bit stuck in the stramine, or how do you say it? It's okay. I they know their ways, and and only their ways is good, right? And you see it like a lot in in my classes sometimes as well. Like if you are coming up with some a way to design in a different way, they always say like, no, no, just do it my way or something. So I think it's a bit about the mentality, I guess, um, or a bit of afraid to change. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm just wondering if it, it is the same thing, say, in medicine or if you mm. study law. You know, I mean, these are mm. all um, these Very are all things that you know they're changing. Yeah. Like law, you might have new laws that are coming in, and if a teacher yeah. doesn't learn those things, he, they cannot yeah. keep up. You know, and I'm guessing with design, it should be the exact same way. I fear yeah, yeah. personally that there is a, a very big bias when it comes to the teaching because teachers design for, or they teach design like if we were designing for other designers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah. like they don't push us to think like if we were designing for people. And yeah, sometimes, yeah. you know, this is okay because you kind of want to bring your skills to the point where other designers look at your work and they understand what you have done and, you know, and they appreciate you for that. 
But ultimately, even from a business point of view, it will make more sense to teach designers how to design for people for because people. ultimately people are the one that, you know, will buy your design. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I always get to fight with teachers when I uh, talk about when this. Think, yeah, 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 understandable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, I want to ask you, do you think that there are things that design students fail to consider before getting into a design education? Mm, yeah, I mean, I mean, in architecture education, uh, and I can speak for that, I guess. Um, but I do think the first year or the first two years is uh, you can design whatever you want, right? You can design uh, with no really like consequences, and and in the end, it's all very fun. It's it's great, and you can design whatever you want. But at the end, it's I mean, you need to calculate the stuff, and you need to construct it, and and at the end, you're just a commercial architect, and so. In the beginning, your views are like, oh, yes, I can do whatever. But in the end, yeah, you train as a commercial architect. So it's it's not, um, how do you say it? It's uh, not really what the, what is expected sometimes. And I was actually a little bit disappointed at the end but because I didn't know that all this stuff. Right? We have to basically think like engineers instead of architects sometimes. So, yeah, there's a lot more than just the design aspect, I guess. I think yeah. that one of the of the things that very often designers miss out, especially when they go into uh, design education, is that they look at this as a you know one way to get a better job after they finish studying, mm -hmm. which you know it's okay. Somebody that is doing a course in architecture uh, or in design, they they probably also do it to get a better career, but. I still think that you need to have that drive to make something interesting, to make something innovative, to create something beautiful. And, you know, very often students simply don't understand that the design has to come from yourself. They just yeah. think, oh, you know, I'll learn how to draw and somebody will give me stuff to do. And that's um, it. Yeah. No, it's, it has to come from it, didn't it? Yeah. It's, uh... It's a drive, I guess, yeah. You, you really want to learn it. Um, but that's why, you know, yeah. I see people like you doing a lot of like personal projects and these personal projects are wildly published everywhere. And then you see other younger designers not doing as well. And mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, that's the reason because somebody really is into what they're doing maybe you don't have the same drive. Maybe you should consider studying something a little bit more technical because, you know, that lack of drive, either you get it or you're going to find yourself in 10 years thinking, why am I not proceeding, you know, in my career? Why am I not advancing? Hmm. I yeah, don't know. That's like, yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I think it's, you have to find your passion, I guess, and you have to experiment with it. And I definitely understand that some subjects may not be for you, but for example, in the 3D industry, there are so many different like uh, um, sectors, right? Yeah. So you, perhaps not that sector is the best one, but this one. I, I, so my, I, my, my, uh, my, my thought on this is just like try everything, see what works, and just like focus on that, I guess, uh, in that case. Yeah. Uh, when di when did you when did you say okay this is where I, what I'm going to study you know I'm going to go into architecture when did you make up your mind? Um, well, it was a couple of years. I, to be honest, I was not really interested in architecture at first. Um, I was I guess seventeen or something, and I came from electromechanics and installation like uh, electricity uh, the education, and it really did not did not work out for me. Uh, and then it was actually my mom who convinced me to try architecture. <laughs> so I was like, oh, all right, let, let's try it, let's try it. And at first it was very difficult, um, but it's something that, that grows with time, I guess, this, this interest and this passion. It, you cannot expect to be interested or passionate about something like instantly, I, I guess. And so, yeah, I started to learn more about architecture and, 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 and design. And gradually I, 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 I saw like, the possibilities and then yeah i guess that became my main focus since then uh yeah um 
Now yeah, it's uh, yeah, the, the reason. Know, yeah. The reason why I'm asking you is because you know, in my case, it took me like maybe six years to figure it out, and I yeah. had to, you know, I was doing something else. I was cooking. Ah, really? <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. And then when I finally got into architecture, because you know, everything that I loved kind of converged into architecture. Then mm. after doing a couple of years, I kind of realized that, you know, making projects for two or three years, same building, it was just boring. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I kind of had to find a creative way to make a shift. And I was wondering if it was the same for you, because at the moment you're not really designing traditional architecture, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, well, I, I, it was just, I guess, this, yeah, um, this workload they handle in, in schools, I guess, that was really frustrating for me. And I really wanted to explore my, um, my ability. So I, I, I just started learning other things. I mean, um, yeah, with Houdini and stuff, those are not your traditional architecture workflows, right? And I think it's also interesting that I work like transdisciplinary. So I don't really consider myself a traditional architect. I try to, um, um, go to projects with a different mindset or like a different uh, uh, pro, uh, thing. And that's also the reason, for example, I did some projects with bioengineers and engineers and some, um, uh, he's now at, uh, teaching it uh, in TU Delft, he's for a space engineer. And so it's really, really interesting to have those uh, multiple disciplines come together, I guess. And it's very nice to have this architecture, this design as a means of communication between those. Exactly, because architecture, to a certain extent, really is everything, you know, it's uh, yeah, space. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, <laughs> it can cover a, 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 a whole broad of topics. It's, yeah. I, I did a couple of years ago, well, actually quite a while ago, actually, almost 10 years ago, a course on uh, basically fashion design using 3D tools. All right. Yeah, and, yeah. and I I did it with uh, Jorge Ayala. Uh, I don't know him. I, I He's now a fashion designer, but he was ah. running the Architecture Association School in Paris. Um, yeah, yeah. I was my one of my instructor was Julia Kerner. Um, I guess I heard of, but uh, she's yeah. been designing like uh, and three D printed all the gear from uh, Black Panther. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, that's great. Yeah, and she was working with like Iris Van Erpen. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's the thing that's so beautiful about like teaching architect or being an architect is that we are not really trained perhaps as an architect, but more as like problem solvers, I think. Yeah. And then those, you can implement this in every discipline, right? So like now a, you're, you're trained like a director, if you really yeah, understand yeah. it, you know, you're like, you are a person that is able to take different abilities put them together and make something beautiful out of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also like train to have a critical eye, I think. That's very important. To, yeah, to of really, course. Yeah. You need to be a curator. Yeah, 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 yeah. basically, yeah. It, uh, 12 years ago, I was at a lecture from Peter Cook. Yeah, yeah. And it was him and another, um, I think, Korean architect, and they were, you know, having a little fight because the Korean architect was working like 70 hours a week, never <laughs> yeah. saw the kids. And he was <laughs> like, and so, you know, Peter yeah. Cook was laughing at him, but it was a joke. And you know, the Korean architect said to him, I don't remember his name. He said to him, you know, that's how you become an architect. And Peter Cook said, I'll show you one day I'll become an architect without having designed any building. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the funny <laughs> the funny thing is that he actually did it <laughs> yeah. oh that's amazing man <laughs> that's great <laughs> listen i want to pick a, i want to pick a little bit your brain and ask you uh, about design trends and technology how do yeah. you envision like the future being influenced you know the industry of uh, architecture industry the design industry what do you think is going to 
look like in like 10 or 15 years now that we have VR and we have oh. like tactile technologies and immersive realities and all that kind of stuff? I, I, I think definitely VR in this and the coming five years, VR and um, real-time engines will explode, I think. Like uh, what, for example, Unreal is doing, it's amazing. And then uh, as well, like the, the thing about this, it's, it's, in my opinion, like, it's a whole different, I guess, paradigm, I guess, the VR workflow, because you know, you're, you're taking all the good elements of 2D drawing, if you're line weight and your, I mean, your very own characteristics, and now you're implementing those in a 3D environment. But it's much more. It's it's so amazing, man. You're gonna love Gravity Sketch, by the way. It's you have your own. Uh, you are your own scale model, so everything is can be according to your own scale. It's, I mean, it's wonderful. So I that's mean, gonna be a great, uh, I guess, technological uh, improvement. And then I'm guessing that afterwards, like with the Google glasses and this immersive AR VR stuff, and then. Um, yeah, and, and, and uh, real-time engines, definitely. Uh, and if they are combined like VR, AR with real-time engines, yeah, that, that's going to be amazing tools, I guess. We're yeah. going to see that happening. I'm yeah. pretty sure of it. Have you seen the movie Ready Player One? Uh, no, I, I, I need to watch more movies, man. Yeah, I don't really watch movies. Really. But that's the student face. What's the student face? The the movie? Yeah, the fact that you're not watching movies is the student face. <laughs> once you're gonna once you're gonna be done, you're gonna be like, wow, I, I can go to the movies. <laughs> <laughs> what cinema exists? What is this? <laughs> no commitment for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what? Living the dream. <laughs> but you're gonna love that movie. It's called Ready Player One. I'm pretty sure that you can find it also online somewhere on some streaming platforms. Fantastic movie. I really loved it. And sometimes I still watch it at home. I have it on uh, Amazon Prime. It's yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna definitely check it out. Yeah. You have to because and you know it's. it's like uh, it, it, it also incorpor incorporates this Unreal or VR experience or? It's everything in VR. The guy basically, you know, uh, it's uh, set in a uh, dystopian world where yeah. people use VR to escape the reality yeah. of their yeah, it's day. Right. And it's, uh, it's, it's trippy and you gotta watch it. I don't want to spoil it to you. No, no. Uh, how is your take on um, these technological improvements the coming five years, for example? Is it also with VR? Or well, yeah, you know, if you think about it, uh, now I look at it from a business point of view. So I know that this is one of the best tools to, yeah. like, sell things to people. Yeah. So we can envision that one day we're not going to have a phone. We're just going to have glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that will give reason to people f to spend more money for the gear because you know they're gonna look cool and people want <laughs> to look cool and maybe every six months you'll have to buy the latest ones because you want to look cool uh, mm -hmm. uh, all yeah. the information will be shot in front of your eyes all the time i think that this is going to happen you know it's uh it's not yeah. it's not much of a Paradigm, uh, pa paradigm shift, you know, I think it's possible. You, but, um, we met at the uh, Immersive Architecture Conference, right? Yeah. A little bit. And uh, I, I, I forgot his name, but um, there was this guy with the uh, leap motion yeah, device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a bit uh, similar, I guess. I uh, love his short. The but, Japanese director. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a bit uh, similar, I guess. Like the, That was an the, amazing I, presentation. Yeah, it was one of the best I've ever seen. It's, it was great. <laughs> no, I know. And it, it, this is exactly basically how you can envision the, the next future, you know, because think about it. I mean, if you are on Facebook, all you need is, you know, a platform that allows you to access it. Now, yeah. if you can only use your hands like in leap motion, you'll be able, you know, to move stuff out of your face and your yeah. glasses will track everything, you know, it's, uh, we I, need, we need to see the consequences of that one day. And, yeah, uh, you know, like we're all cyborgs. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna see the, what, uh, Eric the brush said at the D2 conference. Did you see the lecture? Yeah, I saw it. I saw his conference. Yeah. It was a funny guy, man. He's amazing. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, anyway. Was, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. Continue, continue. Uh, no, uh, um, to, to get back on that, it was actually a pretty funny story, but I was in um, a amusement, amusement park a couple months ago, and there was this thing called the VR roller coaster. And um, we could look at it from the outside, and from outside it was absolute trash. There was like no... Um, it was all rust, uh, no, um, like, it was not made pretty, right? It was really horrible. But everyone took the, uh, their VR glasses on and everything was, like, super beautiful. So that's a bit, I'm very interested in the, in the future. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's yeah. the thing, you know, I was, tr uh, I made my, my father try the roller coaster on the Oculus Go. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and he was like, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, that was so funny. Awesome. <laughs> Listen, just to segue back to uh, our previous question, how do you think designers should future-proof themselves when it comes to technology? Um, I think investigation in like um, the current tools and the workflows, I guess, is very important. Uh, like like. As I said, like pick all the good parts of a certain tool and try to implement those. I guess, uh, like every tool has its specific uh, specialties. Um, I mean, it, it it may be a bit. I mean, learning all the tools is is quite time intensive. But in my case, it was definitely worth it. I guess. Um, I, I can only speak for myself, of course. But I would suggest uh, learning as much as possible, learning all the tools, and just uh, making up your own mind. What is the best? Tool, for example, for this workflow or for this one, and I mean, yeah, I, I guess, uh, yeah, learn as learn as much as possible, man. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we have um, to tell that to the uh, to the teachers at university. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Teach, <laughs> teach three D. Yeah. <laughs> Yoris, yeah. listen. Uh, we are done with this conversation. Believe it or not, we have already been going for thirty six minutes. I just wanted to take the chance to thank you for, you know, being uh, so available and to, you know, share your experience as a student. To me, it's very important that students get inspiration, not only from people from the industry that are already doing stuff, but also from those who are starting out. And yeah. I think that we need more people like you. We need more role models. So I really hope that those who are going to watch this, they're going to find that role model in you. And, you, you know, so I'm very thankful for you to, for, for, for the fact that you gave me your time to do this interview. It was all my pleasure, man. It was great fun. <laughs> Yoris, I'm going to stop the recording. Don't go anywhere so that I can thank you again, okay? Hey, well, yeah, sure, sure man. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks a lot for doing this again. Thanks, man.